I mean, I, th I think I think the the general assumption uh, behind the idea that that the key to getting people to eat better is to provide more warnings is that people are stupid. Um, that people might think that a diet consisting you know entirely of fried chicken and cheeseburgers is healthy, um, and therefore we have to let them know in no uncertain terms that it is not in every possible way, at every turn, right? So it's not enough that nutritional information is available on, our, on the websites of the fast food restaurants, that it's on posters in the restaurants, that it's on leaflets that they give out. It also should be on the menu board. And in fact, thanks to the food evangelist, several states have passed new laws that do exactly that. They force the restaurants to list the calorie counts right on their menu boards. You see, these labelizers are convinced that if we order something like this, or a Hardy's Monster Thick Burger, we just don't know that we're making pigs out of ourselves. Nobody is looking at that and saying, oh, that's a healthy option. You know, that's, I'm going to eat that because it'll improve my, uh, my, uh, my health and it'll be good for me. Um, they know that that is uh, something that is primarily designed to taste good. I, I think there's a, a strong paternalistic element behind that notion that, if, that, oh, people are only eating poorly because they're too ignorant to know better. Most people, I think, know the difference between good and unhealthy food and are making choices for a host of complicated reasons that aren't simply based on eating for what's good for them. We like to do things for a variety of reasons. We don't always do what's good for us. As I demonstrated in Fathead, it's already easy to find nutrition information on fast food if you want to know it. But guess what? Not everybody wants to know. When people go to fast food restaurants, they don't want to have the calorie count shoved in their faces. They don't want to know exactly. You know, it's a, a treat for them, maybe. Maybe they only go there occasionally and they are not don't want to worry about the nutritional profile of what they're eating. Or maybe they eat there all the time and they just don't worry very much about, about nutrition. There are such people in the world, you know, who don't share the values and preferences of the anti-fat activists and public health officials. Most of the time I follow a healthy low-carb diet. But every once in a while I enjoy stuffing myself with a pizza and a few good beers just because they taste good. And when I do, I don't want to know how many calories I'm consuming. That takes the fun out of it. But the labelizers want to take the fun out of it. They want to force you to look at the calorie counts before you order a meal. And they honestly think this is going to make you eat less. Now, I don't think anyone would argue with the idea that having more information about what we eat and about its nutritional content is a good thing. But the idea that somehow or another, if I was confronted with the fact that my Big Mac is 600 calories, would change the likelihood that I ate that Big Mac, um, I think is a lot of wishful thinking. If I'm going to be eating my Big Mac, it's because uh, I know it's going to have a lot of calories, but I'm eating it because it's savory, uh, it appeals to my sense of hunger at that particular moment, and I'm likely to be sort of discounting whatever kind of weight or health consequences come from that fact. And I think most people know that about food. It's just that at the moment when they're hungry, they're reaching for something to fulfill an impulse towards hunger, not necessarily towards health. Why are these people so convinced that more labels and more warnings are going to work? Have they ever worked before? One might say, for example, that food labeling started several decades ago, just about the same time that we started increasing weight. So in fact, that food labeling hasn't done anything for uh, helping the obesity epidemic. The people who push these laws annoy me. For one thing, I don't think warning labels stop people from making bad decisions. For an example of why I believe that, let's recreate a scene from Super Size Me. I'm at the three-day hump. You know, it's like when I quit smoking, you got the three-day hump. First day, second day, third day. That's why it's called a three-day hump. If it was a four-day hump, I would have said uh, first day, second day, third day, fourth day. If it's a two-day hump, just one, two. Five-day hump, I don't, we don't have time for that. What we learned from that scene, besides the fact that the three-day hump happens on the third day, is that Spurlock used to smoke. Wait a second, he was born in West Virginia in 1972. Well, that means unless he started smoking several years before he was born, which is rare, even in West Virginia, he started smoking in spite of this warning label. Every pack, every carton he ever purchased was telling him in black and white, this product is going to kill you. But he smoked. There's also a little bit of hypocrisy going on here. 
One of the big proponents of putting calorie counts right up on the menu is Kelly Brunell, who appeared as an expert in Super Size Me and is the head obesity expert at Yale. Brunell is so convinced that we need these calorie warnings, he filed a brief supporting them in a lawsuit. Just one little problem. Kelly Brunell is obviously obese. So let me get this straight. The obesity expert at Yale University can't keep his own weight down. But if he can just get the government to force you to look at the calories in a Big Mac, you will keep your weight down. I don't want to sound cruel, but why should anyone listen to this guy for advice on losing weight? If you ask them, uh, is this really the government's business? If people choose to do this, they know it's risky and they choose to do it anyway, maybe you should just let them do it. Their response will generally be something along the lines of they don't really know the risk, they don't really understand what they're doing, or they might know the risks, but given their circumstances, they have a hard time making healthy choices, right? And so we have to help them make the right choice. So really, we're freeing them in a sense, because we're freeing them from the environment that constrains them. And we'll know that they're free once they start making the right choices. Once they start making the choices that we want them to make, then they will really be free. You know when we'll really be free? We'll really be free when these busybodies realize that what you and I decide to eat is none of their business.